Barbara Kingsolver published a work of literary fiction titled Demon Copperhead in 2022. While his mother is inebriated from drug and alcohol, Demon is born in a tiny town in Virginia. When he is born in his amniotic sac, his neighbor Mrs. Peggett, who is helping with the delivery, says he has good luck and won't ever drown. Demon's mother's addictions caused him to spend the most of his early years with the Peggett since his father had passed away before Demon was even born. They have a grandchild called Maggot who is comparable in age to Demon. Maggot's mother is in jail for trying to kill her lover, so he spends all of his time with his grandparents. Demon want to live with the Peggots forever, since he and Maggot are close pals. Even while his mother makes an effort to maintain her sobriety, her relationship with a harsh man who goes by the nickname Stoner further disrupts Demon's already unstable upbringing. When Demon is 10 years old, the Peggots take him to Knoxville as a family vacation. Jane, a daughter of Mrs. Peggot, is a nurse with a steady job and good apartment. Emmy, the daughter of Jane's deceased brother, is under Jane's care. Emmy is initially tough for Demon to get along with, but they end up becoming friends when he helps her overcome her shark phobia while they are visiting the aquarium. Demon, who has never seen the ocean but dreams of being near water, gets a life-changing experience on this day at the aquarium. Demon learns that his mother wed Stoner after he gets back from Knoxville. Stoner starts mocking and degrading Demon and his mother by referring to Maggot as Faggot, and banning Demon from seeing each other. Demon responds to Stoner's increasing physical and mental abuse by striking back. The strain of her marriage forces Demon's mother to relapse into drugs and alcohol. Demon discovers her unconscious one day, and calls 911. The Department of Social Services approaches him in the hospital. He is unable to live with the Peggots while his mother is in treatment since Stoner has accused them of abusing Demon. Instead, he is given permission to remain on a farm owned by a widower called Crixon by his social worker, Miss Barks. Whenever he needs funding and helping hands, Crixon takes in foster boys. Demon has farm work to do, but Crixon feeds him well and allows him to continue going to the same school. In addition to Tommy, who Crixon mocks for being overweight but who is really quite nice, and Swap Out, a boy with fetal alcohol syndrome, Crixon also fosters Fast Forward, a charming high school athlete who takes money from the boys and gives them drugs. On the day that Demon turns 11, his mother overdoses on OxyContin and passes away. For the winter break, the Peggots bring Demon to Knoxville after being exonerated of all charges. He is inspired by Aunt June's generosity and Emmy's sympathy for him. June's decision to return to Lee County excites him, and he falls in love with Emmy. Emmy's formal adoption by June leads Demon to believe that he may be adopted by the Peggots. He asks Mrs. Peggett, but she responds that she is too elderly and feeble to continue caring for children. Demon is relocated to a foster residence. A married couple and their four little children, all under the age of seven, make up the macabre family. The macabres seek to maintain a facade of luxury and sophistication despite their poverty. Demon is taken in so they can get money through the foster system but they starve him and make him sleep in the laundry room. Mr. Macabre collaborates with Stoner to help Demon get a job so that he can help support the family. Demon is given work picking through rubbish at a market that doubles as a meth lab's facade. Due to the Macabre's neglect of Demon, he develops untidy habits and exhibits signs of mourning and resentment. He is shunned by the students at his school because they think he is unclean and poor, and his confidence falters. The macabres are forced to move after their automobile gets repossessed. Demon flees with the cash he got by sorting rubbish. In an effort to track out his father's mother, he hitches to Tennessee. His money is stolen at a rest stop, but he manages to track down his grandma, Betsy Woodall. Betsy nurtures young girls who need homes, but she stays out of the foster care system because she thinks it is flawed. 
she also tends after her intelligent but physically frail brother Dick. Betsy has sworn off boys and men who aren't Dick, so she doesn't want to take Demon in. However, Betsy also tracks down the husband of one of her previous foster children since she refuses to let Demon go back into the foster care system. Although the wife passed away from cancer, the man lives in Lee County and cares for their little kid. Demon returns to Lee County to live with renowned high school football coach Winfield after he accepts to take him in. Demon has his own bedroom in Winfield's big home, and all he has to worry about is doing well at school. Angus, Winfield's daughter, is in the eighth grade, dresses like a boy, and is smart and outspoken. Demon begins doing better academically as a result of his guidance counselor, Mr. Armstrong, who believes Demon has the potential to enroll in the gifted and talented program. Demon is concerned that Winfield will ultimately force him to leave, and despite his newfound stability, he doesn't like the man who runs errands for Winfield called U Hall. Demon also reconnects up with Emmy and Aunt June, who have returned to Lee County, and the Peggots, and finds out Maggot has begun donning makeup as a goth. Demon adjusts to his new and happy existence as he progresses through middle school and develops into a football team standout. Fast Forward takes him partying one night, and Demon hears horrific tales from a girl called Rose about Fast Forward's harsh abuses. Demon encounters a young woman called Dory who skips class to care for her ill father. He falls in love with her right away, but his happiness is short-lived due to a football injury. He is given prescriptions for a number of drugs that include OxyContin and develops an addiction to them. After the homecoming dance, Dory gives him his first fentanyl injection, and they engage in their first intercourse while intoxicated. Demon moves in with Dory after the death of her father. They begin to live for their addictions, squeaking by, working odd jobs to pay for their drug purchases. Demon needs some distance from Dory but finds it impossible to break up with her. He begins hanging out with Tommy who assists him in publishing anonymous comic strips about the superhero Redneck who protects Appalachian residents from the issues they encounter in society in the neighborhood newspaper. Because of how well-liked the comics are, Demon is given a formal contract to publish them. Dory discloses to being pregnant as her addiction reaches a new low. Emmy and Fast Forward started dating but have since split up. He forced her to have intercourse with his employers in Atlanta by enlisting her in his drug peddling operation. Emmy is found by June and Demon half naked, malnourished, and passed out, and they decide to take her back to Atlanta. During their talk about Demon's life on the drive home, June shares information that Demon was unaware of. His father drowned unintentionally at Devil's bathtub. Shortly after having a miscarriage, Dory overdoses and dies. Demon, Maggot, and Emmy's ex-boyfriend Hammer discover Fast Forward at Devil's Bathtub on a rainy night when they are all high. Fast Forward becomes scared seeing Hammer's gun and leaps down the waterfall to escape, where he falls on rocks and dies. Hammer drowns after diving into the choppy water in an attempt to save Fast Forward. Maggot is accused of being an accessory to Hammer's death and given a two-year term in Juvenile Hall, where he is obliged to get help for his meth addiction. Demon accepts June's offer to locate him a treatment facility and then a halfway home. Demon achieves and maintains sobriety in Knoxville for three and a half years. He comes back to Lee County when Mrs. Annie, the high school art teacher, agrees to assist him in creating a book proposal for a graphic novel. By the time he is done writing the book, Maggot and his mother are no longer in jail, sober, and sharing a home. Emmy attended therapy as well, and she is now content in pursuing dancing in her own halfway home. Demon sees Angus again and knows he loves her. They ultimately get to the sea together by car. If you have any suggestion about which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.